This is Jenna Burt, host of the Confessions of a Military Spouse podcast. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hey, you're listening to Let's Hustle with Lee and Chelsea. We are two girls making our way in sales and entrepreneurship. We set out to make this podcast after entering our late 20s and realizing we were hitting a wall and felt like our lives and careers were stagnant. After expressing this feeling to countless other women, we realized we weren't alone. So each week we're bringing you real conversations with real people that are authentic, realistic, and relatable in hopes that you can grow into the best version of yourself. So strap in and let's hustle. Hey, everybody. I Lee always giggles when I say that because that's how I say it every single time. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I love it, though. It's just my thing. It's cute. Um. Well, with that being said, welcome to yet another episode of Let's Hustle Podcast. Welcome. This welcome. is Lee. And this is Chelsea. And we couldn't be more happy that you are here with us today. Same. So... We have a lot to talk about. We do. But first. Yes. Tell me about your week. My week has been actually pretty okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Got a little like election stress going on, but I think I'm all right. I think that, you know, I've been working a lot. I've been very busy. I've been keeping busy, you know, to save my sanity. You know, my brain has been on other things. Well, just so you know, it's affected me negatively that you're <clears throat> working so much. I know. I'm sorry. So I'd be like, hey, let's grab lunch. And you'd be like, oh my gosh, yes. And now it's like, I can't. I'm working. I'm working. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm making that cheddar. I know. I got to make money. Hey, I respect that. Which is great. And I've, I have been making money. Finally. Love. Yay. Yay. So I'm really stoked. Love that. Yeah. So anyways, um, how have you been, my dear? <sighs> great. Like, Good. so very busy. Um, all is well though. Mm-hmm. I listened to a podcast that Allison told me to listen to. Ooh, okay. Um, I was just like so crazy. Um, and when you're talking about your friend Molly a little bit earlier, mm-hmm. um, it made me think of this podcast because the girl on its name is Molly, mm-hmm. but she's like terminal with cancer. Oh my gosh, is it di- living to dying to live or dying dying something like that? Wow. Yeah. Dying, 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 for, dying for, I can't remember. Yeah. But anyways, it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, it is just, it is, she's like looking for something in the end. She's like the physical stuff wasn't what was important. It was like the friendships and the relationships and like the things she learned along the way. Yeah, absolutely. So I thought that was really cool. You know, it's really funny. Allison recommended a podcast to me that I listened to today. What was it? Binge Mode. Binge mode. It's all about they like dive in depth in different like oh TV shows, movies. So they've done like Game of Thrones. They did mm. they do a two hour episode on every Wait. single episode of Game of Thrones. You and Shane were talking about this the other day. Yeah. So they yeah. just started doing Marvel. Oh yes. I and remember you talking about this. So I listened to the first two episodes, which is well, they have three right now. They have Iron Man, Iron Man Two, and The Incredible Hulk, but if it's not Ro- Mark Ruffalo, I'm not freaking watching it. So <laughs> <laughs> I've only listened to Love that. Iron Man and Iron Man 2. And let me tell you, their content is amazing and is they it? dive in like so well. But wow, do the two hosts get on my freaking nerves so much. <laughs> Love that. They are just horrible to listen to. <laughs> God, they're so annoying. Uh. I just, they're, they... They really think they're doing something. Like, do you know, they really yeah. think they're funny. Like, they, oh man, they think they're really funny. Yeah. And they're not comedians. That's the. So you're like, you're not funny. <laughs> they're just like nerds. And I'm like, can you guys just talk? Because all their theories and all their, the way they explain stuff, freaking incredible. Right. Love it. Right. But man, they go off on tangents. And I'm just like, honey, no one's laughing. Just no, move on. Let's catch, move let's keep on, keep on rolling. Love that. But anyways, I love it. So look at Allison and She's her just recommendations. So great. She's just so great. How wonderful. Love her. Okay. But yeah, Big A is turning 36 this weekend. So Yay. we're going to, I don't know what we're going to do because we're kind of in a pandemic. Um, <laughs> so probably just hang out with the dog. Just high five each other. You know? Yep. Great job. Six foot distance. <laughs> Social distancing. So. 
There's I, that. It's going to be wonderful, no matter what you do. It'll sit at one end of the table, I'll sit at the other. <laughs> like, we'll just Cook gaze. them dinner. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll make spaghetti, mm-hmm. and we'll just gaze into each other's eyes. I'll be I fine. love this. I love this. Yeah. And I'll be like, let's play a game. And he'll be like, oh my gosh. I'll be like, what am I thinking? Hates those games. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up underneath the table? <laughs> I'm a child. Do you remember? Oh my gosh. Speaking of games, you got Allison. Oh, so good this weekend. And I heard all about it. <laughs> and it was well the funniest thing I've ever heard. I was going. I We can't tell the people because if I ever meet anyone and want to read their palm, they can't know the punchline. Right. But like. I or how I call a deer. It was well. This is the thing, and this is what Shane said was so funny about it. Is so we won't give away the ending or the yeah, punchline, but just know that Chelsea got Allison so well with this palm reading, <laughs> and Allison was like, "Oh my gosh, like you got me!" And then I mean, Chelsea literally immediately, I mean, without even taking a breath, was like, "So do you want me to do a deer call for you?" And Allison was like, "Yes, you know how to do a deer call." And Shane said that he knew he was like. So she's joking again, but she said, he said she was so intrigued and just like following along. And you were like, oh yeah, like I'm from Wyoming. We all, everyone in Wyoming knows how to call a deer. Like, like you have on. to get creative. You have to know. And she, he said that, oh my God, it was the funniest thing. Cause she was just hanging on every word. Oh, every word. Oh, that's sweet. When I was reading palms, like she was like deer in headlights. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen? Oh my gosh. What does the line mean? <laughs> the first part is I had to explain it. I was like, get it? Get it? <laughs> Anyways, oh. if you're really interested, I can tell you next week. Chelsea but it's oh, just man. really good. Yeah. So it's great. Lots of dad jokes. <laughs> yep. She's a pro at them. Love them. Love them. Um, but should we get into it? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, so. With everything going on and working and trying to make money and I am very passionate about sales and, you know, Lee has to sell, sell her product for her business, which is amazing and wonderful. And I like so learning great. about sales from you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Love that. That's really what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there are some techniques and strategies that I think can be very useful, but also can hinder the sales process and are a little bit outdated. Mm -hmm. And so today we want to talk about being passive, being aggressive, being assumptive, and being assertive. Thank you. Hey. So a lot of times a salesperson is very passive because they're too afraid. So I was trying to think of how to... (laughs) P A A A. That's what I did in my brain, and I was like, I don't want to say that out loud, and then I started laughing. So, so today we're talking about pa, <laughs> or as we like to call it, pa. <laughs> okay. Anyway, sorry. Anyways, there are um, ways. Go ahead. We got weird. <laughs> um. So passive is, you know, I think it's maybe someone who's a little bit newer in sales, or this is a people pleaser, somebody who doesn't like to be rejected. If that's the case. Please, honey, get out of sales because you're going to get punched in the throat with a lot of no's. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't be afraid of that. But a passive person, they're not going to want to ask for the business. And they're afraid of getting a no, afraid of losing the sale, just like afraid. And, you know, that really only hinders the sales process. Yeah. And, like, I think people kind of get in their own head of when they get in sales. They want – because you – you're told so many times you're selling yourself like mm-hmm. you are selling you. And mm-hmm. so some people take that as like, I have to be so likable and I don't want anyone to ever not like me. So yeah. sometimes that can make you a little passive because you're, you know, saying you just want this person to like you and you don't want them to get mad at you and you don't want them to be annoyed by you and you just want to be likable. And then you are just passive, which I Nobody likes. No one likes that, and I definitely sorry. was guilty of that. <laughs> well, here's, like, if you are a salesperson and you're saying these things, we're here to help. Mm-hmm. So a, pass- a passive approach might look like something like this. Could you give me a call when you've made a decision? 
Don't do it. Sure. <laughs> Would you mind if I sent you a brochure to help you decide? <laughs> no. How about I call you in a few days to see if you've made a decision? Hmm. All I can say is using a passive approach like the ones that I just shared, 1,000% does not move the sales process forward. Instead, all it's going to do is create steps that are irrelevant to any type of decision-making process, Mm -hmm. which is the only reason why you're there. (laughs) Yeah. So don't make it hard on yourself. Like, if you're going to take a passive approach, it's out of fear of losing the sale, fear of being offended or offending somebody, or the fear of pretty much selling anything. Yep. And a fear comes from lack of knowledge. So Mm -hmm. how do we get over our passive tendencies is to be an expert at what you're selling. Absolutely. And that takes time. It does take time. And whenever you have that passive approach, you're not only giving your decision maker an easy way out to yes. never have oh to say gosh. no to you, you're also wasting your own time because if yeah. they would just say no, you can move on. You can move on and work on other things that my, might be a yes. Yeah, exactly. Ex- oh my gosh. I feel like the last two years, that's something I've really come into. It's like, okay, so they said no. That just means no for now. You fall up in six months, maybe something else will happen. Absolutely. No doesn't always mean no. It just means no for right now. Yep. And the other thing is, like, I love, I I like to say this. It's kind of corny, but, like, that's fine. Damn. I just always like, hey, look, I just want to level with you. I could, I can handle a no. Obviously, I love a yes. Mm-hmm. But we both, we just don't have time for maybes. Yeah. Like, I love that. I'm a big girl. Tell me no if that's what you mean. You know, I just just ask for the business, y'all. Like, they don't have time to play these games. And if they're stringing you along, the answer's probably no. Yeah. So just rip off the Band-Aid. It's okay that someone says no. You can move on to other things. So that leads us into the next approach. <laughs> on the other end. The other spectrum. We call this the douchebag. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help it, but it's real. You'll hear. It is. You'll hear in the next thing I say to you. If you don't buy now, the offer is off the table. How does that make you feel? Makes me want to scream and Absolutely. walk out and not do the deal. Exactly. If you don't want to do business with us, please tell me so. We don't. Oh, please tell us so we don't keep wasting our time. If you don't want to do business, just let me know so I don't keep wasting my time. Like, okay, then leave, honey. Yeah. Leave. I feel like we just said that was okay, though. I'm actually pretty okay with that. Here's my problem with it. Go ahead. I think them saying, if you don't do business with us, please tell me so we won't be wasting our time. I think that has to be told to the um, the right audience. You have to know who you're talking to when you use something like that. I think a more soft but yet assertive way would be... Do you want to do business with us? Please let me know by next Tuesday. Right. Or you could flip it because that is, I think that that is meant to be read in like, I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. You could flip it and be like, I don't want to waste your time Absolutely. and keep calling you. Like, I, I know your time is valuable. Like, exactly. maybe that would be a little that softer be much way better. to say it. And I'm with you. I don't yes. necessarily think it's like the worst, but it can come off as pretty aggressive. Yeah. And, but the biggest thing is you have to know who you're talking to. And mm-hmm. you definitely want to learn that through the sales process. Hey, you might have a guy that likes an aggressive salesperson. Mm-hmm. You just might. But you're also going to have people that 1,000% don't. Yeah. Um, another one was like, what do I need to do to make the decision happen now? Another way to make say this without being so aggressive is like, do you have any concerns that are prohibiting you from moving forward that I could address? Ooh, yep. You know? That's a really good one. Absolutely. So it's just to the point um, that we are not always doing like a hard sell. This usually causes feelings of antagonization, mm-hmm. <laughs> which customers aren't really like. Um, even if the customer makes a decision, he or she may be feeling pressured, which could lead to less than happy feelings towards a salesperson or could mm-hmm. delay the deal or potentially end the deal. So mm-hmm. with a no. Yeah. So I think there's a time and a place for an assert- aggressive sale, but you got to know your audience. And then as I think you get more tenured and more confident and know what you're doing and who you're talking to, you get 
the best one, which is the oh. assertive approach. Yes. And here is an example. Can you give me a specific date when you'll make your decision? Music to my ears. That's just so much better. Or what factors might cause a delay in the decision-making process? Also a great, great question to ask. It's a great question because you get more information on... Yeah, you're always moving forward. Maybe they aren't the actual decision maker. You exactly. know what I mean? Maybe oh, yeah. they are technically, but maybe they got to go through somebody else or they got to check with X, Y, and Z. Yep. And so that gives you extra in- info for your next touch points. Yep, exactly. Hello, how did your conversation with so-and-so go? Because the last time you told me you had to talk to so-and-so. Yep. What's up? Well, and also in asking these, you're going to get an answer. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it really helps you gauge whether it's hot or cold or whether you just need to walk away. That's right. Um, Another one that I really like is what steps will be, what steps will you be taking in order to make a decision? I like. Very assertive. Not rude. It sets up a timeline. It moves it forward. It makes you sound knowledgeable. Mm Mm-hmm. Patient, but... Hey, I'm here to get your business. Yeah. And I always like when I have a meeting, I like to set the premise of like, hey, this is what I have to offer. And at the end of this meeting, I will be asking for your business. If you can give me a yes, obviously I want to love that or I wouldn't be here. I can more than, more than well handle a no, but all I ask is no maybes. You know? I love it. So you're just setting it up so you can ask that without feeling so uncomfortable. Totally. Um... I just think, I think an assertive approach is, isn't pushy. It isn't a push over. It just helps create a discussion that helps you and your customer better understand what's going to happen and how to move forward Mm -hmm. in the process because it is a partnership and you come off as more of a consultant versus a salesperson. I was about to say it ups the professionalism in, you know, a, a vast amount. Very much. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about it. I think also for the longest time I would end my emails in, I look forward to working with you or something like that. Ooh. But the more I've thought about it, I think it's good to be assumptive in selling. Like, hey, these two shirts would look good. Like you're assuming, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it can just be like, well, honey, we never <laughs> said that we were going to. Yeah. You know, that's why it's like, hey, what day can I follow up with you next week? Mm-hmm. Or what's the next step in the decision-making process? Yep. That's assumptive, but it's more so assertive. It's way more assertive. And I don't think it's insulting. Like, yeah. I think maybe the shirt example you gave earlier, I wouldn't say that that is too assuming in mm-hmm. a rude way. Because it's more, you're just, you know, dropping a little Easter egg of like, hey, you know what, this would look great. What I hate, and this is what I'm dealing with right now, with um, being the president of a soccer supporters group, is we now have merchandise that we get to sell with our logo and everything on it. And, you know, we have like scarves and kits and whatever else, right? So I'm getting all these emails from these (laughs) scarf companies and these kit companies. And the ones that annoy me the most are people who say, hey, we really wanted to, you know, reach out to you. We want to send over some sample designs. Yeah. We really look forward to working with you in the future. And I just want to be like, homie, I don't even know you. Why are you looking forward to working with me? Why do you think I'd want to work with you? Like, I hate when people, you know what I mean? And I just do that, though. Yeah, that's the same. I used to do that. Always, because it's. You always have been told. Mm -hmm. I think that it's a lot more like sales managers tell that to salespeople without them even realizing like, oh, if someone said that to me, I would hate that because it's like a cutesy, kitschy thing. Well, it's also just kind of, I think, getting phased out and it works for certain, like, again, know your audience. Absolutely. You know, you've got to know your audience. So... I mean, there's ways in doing that, and there's ways in overcoming being passive, and, you know, one of that is overcoming your fear. You've got to fall on your face. You've got to learn. You've got to ask the hard questions. You've got to do the things that make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, You've got to have a winning attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not 
I'm there's no such thing as failure. I don't fail. I just learn. That's yep. a winning attitude. Absolutely. You know, it's you can learn from everything versus just like, oh man, I failed. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> Literally, who cares? Yeah. Just buck up and fix it. Um, and then you got to know your product. I'm telling you, people. If you know your product, you'll come off as knowledgeable. When you come off as knowledgeable, people will trust you. And when people trust you, they will buy from you. Like, hands down, that's the key to sales is you just got to know what you're talking about. And when you know what you're talking about, you come off as confident because huh, you are. Because <laughs> you are. So there's no faking it, you know? And yeah. so, and then the last thing is you just got to practice. Make more calls, make more dials, send more emails, mm-hmm. talk to people, ask people, expand mm-hmm. your network. Mm-hmm. Practice mm-hmm. makes perfect. Mm-hmm. And be assertive. Be assertive. Ask for, here is, if you can take anything away from this, just ask for the business. Yep. Just ask for it. Ask for it. Or like, ask it in a way that is giving you a solid answer. Yes. Like my, from again, from my experience as now a decision maker in these uh-huh. things, my favorite emails and the emails that I respond to the quickest are uh-huh. people who reach out. They say, hey. We want to design this, blah, blah, blah. When will you need these by? And I'm like... Freaking perfection. Because I'm like, oh, I'll need them by December. Can you do... Like, then it entices me. Is like, they're already keen yep. to the fact that we, you know, they want to help. Already yep. they want to help. Yep. Because it makes me think like, oh, like they genuinely are interested in this and they don't want to uh-huh. like drag on this process. I'm like, maybe I will ask them to design a few samples, you know? Exactly. So, and it's just like asking specific questions because... They're being assertive in saying that they want... Because they're assuming it in a way that's not offensive. They're it's, assuming the yeah. sale by saying, when do you need these by? But they're being, like, they're actually being helpful. Yeah. And not being, a, like, skinny, a jack slimy little... Cheeky monkey. A little slithery snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just... There's something that I just have respect when someone's like, can I have your business? Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, oh. You know? Yeah. Just ask for it. Just I appreciate ask you for asking. It. The other thing that I couldn't tell you is really good in a sales process is to just become very familiar with your competition. Yep. Because then you can set yourself apart or if you know ways that, that what they're doing and you, maybe they didn't tell the full truth, only a half truth because they are a salesperson and can make it put it in a box in a beautiful little bow and it looks great. And then you're like, hmm, did they explain this to you? No. Okay, now I've become even more of a consultant, and they trust me that I know what I'm talking about because I was right and wasn't trying to bamboozle. Absolutely. So know your product, know your competition, know your customer. Man, there's just, like, a lot of things to, like, write down. (laughs) Better be taking notes on this one. We're dropping some (laughs) golden nugs. Nugs. Little nuggies. Little nug nugs. But, yeah, I think that's just, I don't think I know. That's just so important. If you're in sales, it's a very lucrative job to be in and Mm -hmm. you can make a lot of money and you can also not make any money and yep it's it's for some people and it's not for others but I think these things that we're talking about right now can help you be better and Mm -hmm. ultimately you're going to make more money and if that's what you want then this podcast is for you especially this episode (laughs) so like go open a 401k and get your (laughs) Roth IRA and let's like diversify our funds (laughs) I'm just kidding. That was so stupid. No, that was great. <laughs> you know what I really love about this conversation, though? Tell me. Is that these things that we're talking about can be applied to any aspect in your but they life can. and not just sales. And it's, I mean, it's a great communication technique yes. of if you're having a conflict with someone and it doesn't even have to be a coworker, like no. a family member, a friend, yep. you're a loved, a lover. A lover. <laughs> One a of lover. love and passion. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, you don't, you can't be passive. You cannot be aggressive. You cannot be assuming because when you assume, you, yep. know, you know the rest, know. girl. You know, know the, the rest. rest. I know the rest. Mr. It's, Gonzalez taught me that. We called him Mr. G in geology. Oh, I he like He told that. me. He, well, he told the whole class he wrote it on the board. And you were like, oh, Ass- he's cool because he says Assume curse me. words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. did he just say the A word? Oh, my gosh. But think about it like, oh, my gosh, my hair just flipped and hit the back of this chair and actually made a noise in the mic that was really... <laughs> Really aggressive hair right now. Wow, calm um, your hair down. Wow. <laughs> um, 
But think about any like argument or conflict that you've gotten into like with a friend. Mm-hmm. Like think about the fight that me, you and well, not even a fight. You know what I mean? A little tiff that you and I no, had. We had a fight. Yeah, we had a fight. Sorry. We yeah. Decked each other in the face with feelings. <laughs> with feelings. <laughs> Yeah, um, a black eye from that one. But, but think about that. Like, I think when we both were being passive and aggressive, it was not working. But then when we actually talked to each other later and were assertive of, hey, you know what? This is what I said. Mm-hmm. This is what I thought you meant. My bad. I apologize. I didn't mean it it's like this. Miscommunication. Mis- like, you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. when you're actually assertive and you just say facts. I want don't... this because A, B, and C correct then you it's for you're freaking golden yep and i wasn't sitting here being like hey i know we're gonna make up later so let's just get this over with you know what i mean like that's assuming i'm uh-huh. not gonna assume that like i genuinely wanted you to feel a certain way because i love you thanks Fran. you're welcome <laughs> but yeah that's very accurate yeah but yes so be assertive be assertive be, be assertive, assertive. I'm not going to spell it. Yeah, me neither, because I'd probably... I can do aggressive. <laughs> yeah. But um, what did I say? Because I was trying to spell it in my head in the cheer. Aggressive. B. B-E-A-G-R-E. No. No, how does it... B-E-A-G-G-R-E-S-S-I-V-E. There you go. I have two. Cheerleader over here. Yeah, there was two. B-E-A-G-G... Yeah, but it was at a different cadence. S S I V E. I don't know, maybe. Oh, well, I knew that one and another one in a different cadence. B E. But I'm trying to think of the movements. Anyways, <laughs> we just really did a little ones. sidestep clap. You know what I mean? We just did yeah. a little side to we side. We did like a thing like this. Straight arms. It was really <laughs> intense. <laughs> Locked elbows. <laughs> don't. Oh. <laughs> And Lee's upset with somebody. <laughs> Hitting things, <laughs> picking up everything. It's fine. These um, mics are really good. They are. But yeah, so be aggressive <laughs> in your driving, not in your sales technique. <laughs> That's right. They're progressive is what you're supposed to. Be. You're supposed to be a progressive driver. Oh, not aggressive or passive. So it looks like um, I learned something today. Too. You're only supposed to be aggressive in sports. Okay. Is what we're trying to say. Perfect. Great. Love that. <laughs> If cheerleaders taught us nothing, it's only acceptable in sports. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah. But next week, we have some more good, fun, fun stuff for you versus just sales. But, mm-hmm. you know, sales is really like our love, so, or mine. <laughs> yeah. So, we're I mean, happy you're here. We are happy that you're here, and um, we hope you have the best week ever. And I hope you make lots of sales and lots of money. I hope and you just are. Just assertive be just so assertive this absolutely week. and here's the other thing if you're really assertive people listen to you they do they're like oh she knows what she wants right <laughs> okay and in a nice way yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah but anyways please rate review subscribe tell your friends tell your mom tell your sisters tell your loved ones tell your social media pages too yeah please I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. But anyways, join us next week for another episode of Let's Hustle, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.